How Expert! Top 10 Japanese Fashion Subcultures. How Expert publishes quick how to guides on all topics from A to Z by everyday experts. Visit howexpert.com to learn more. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more How Expert Top 10 videos in the future. Moving on, let's talk about the How Expert Top 10 Japanese Fashion Subcultures. Number 10 Zentai. The name Zentai comes from the Japanese word Zentai Shu, or full body suit, which tells you pretty much all you need to know about this niche trend. While most of the fashions further up on this list coordinate different layers and accessories to achieve the desired look, there's only one thing a Zentai outfit needs, and that's a skin tight spandex suit that covers your whole body, even your face sometimes. When it comes to strutting your stuff on the streets, Zentai is far from the most popular J fashion subculture, but the style is still displayed by some professional athletes and performers, and is a pretty common look in music videos. For example, you can see these funky faceless guys pop up pretty often in YouTuber Poppy's content. Number 9. Kogel in the West, schoolgirl outfits with short skirts are generally found only in adult Halloween costumes. But for the Kogels of Japan, the short-skirted schoolgirl style is everyday apparel. The Kogel look is based on the uniforms Japanese schoolgirls typically wear, but with a few rebellious twists. Kogel skirts are much shorter than the conservative skirts of traditional school uniforms. And the uniform standard neat white socks are swapped out for bunched up tube socks or leg warmers. When it first started, the Kogel subculture had a less than stellar reputation, as it was associated mainly with rebellious or delinquent girls. Over time, however, Kogel has become more accepted by mainstream culture. Number 8. Rockabilly the fashion of the 1950s America isn't just appealing to citizens of the U.S., but to people of Japan as well. The rockabilly subculture of Japanese fashion is all about recreating the iconic 50s look. The key elements of the rockabilly look differ depending on gender. Rockabilly guys usually have black leather jackets, jeans, and Elvis-inspired hair. For the gals, it's more common to wear stereotypical circle or poodle skirts even though a few female rockabillies opt to dress in the more masculine style instead. Number 7. Mori K. If you ever wanted to dress like you just came out of the forest, and not in the clothes torn to shreds by jaguars kind of way, you'll want to explore the fashion subculture of Mori K, a style specifically for forest-focused fashion. The Mori K subculture was first founded in 2006, when an online community called Mori Girl, or Forest Girl in Japanese, was created on the Japanese social media network Mixi. From there, it quickly gained popularity. Mori K fashion is based on a rustic, natural aesthetic. It usually uses soft, flowing layers of clothes, which are often coupled with sweaters, scarves, boots, and handmade, nature-themed accessories. The typical color palette of a Morike outfit consists of both light and neutral colors like off-white, tan, and beige. Morike is now past its prime in Japan, with most magazines and brands dedicated to the subculture having been discontinued. Despite its decline, there are still Morike enthusiasts all over the world that continue to love the fashion for its natural look. Number 6. Gyaru the flip side to Morike's modest, unassuming style is the Gyaru subculture, a bold and spunky style that takes the look of a stereotypical American valley girl and runs with it. If the point of Morike fashion is to look like you just stepped out of a forest, the point of the Gyaru fashion is to look like you just stepped out of Sharpay Evans' closet. The word gyaru means girl in Japanese, which at first glance makes the name gyaru girl seem a little redundant. However, in context, the term gyaru girl is actually used to describe girls that wear bold, stylish clothes and usually have a bold personality to match. Tight, form-fitting clothes are a must in gyaru, with heels or platform shoes also being a common component of most gyaru ensembles. To truly look like a gyaru girl, however, you can't stop at just clothes. 
Makeup and hair are important parts of the Gyaru look too. Gyaru fashion is heavily associated with dyed hair, with bleached blonde hair being the most common choice. Other elements of the style include heavy makeup, tan skin, and long nails. Like Morike, the Gyaru subculture has declined considerably in popularity since its peak in the 90s. But despite this, it's still one of the more well-known J-fashion subcultures. Number 5. Visual K As a fashion famous for its wild hairstyles, elaborate costumes, and androgynous aesthetic, Visual K is a J-fashion subculture where ordinary people dress like rock stars. Visual K as a name most likely originated from the fashion choices of the 1980s heavy metal group X Japan and their slogan, Psychedelic Violence Crime of Visual Shock. When Visual K was first introduced, some people definitely found the style shocking. With Visual K fans flaunting both androgynous, pretty boy looks, you'd expect to see only in girls' romance manga, while simultaneously sporting dramatic, edgy makeup and clothes. Over time, Visual K has become so varied that it's hard to pinpoint what the staple elements of the style are, since so many subdivisions of the original Visual K look have been formed over the years. When it comes down to it, though, the core theme of the Visual K style is contradictions. Visual K fans look disheveled and messy, but in a clean, purposeful way, and despite their gender-ambiguous looks, there is an undoubtedly masculine and intimidating element to their appearance. Number 4. Fairy K Almost everyone is at least somewhat nostalgic for the cute and colorful media of their childhood, but fans of the Fairy K subculture turn that nostalgia into an art form with their cutesy and childlike outfits. Even total newcomers to the world of J fashion are probably familiar with the word kawaii, the Japanese umbrella term for all things cute. With its cute aesthetic, Fairy K falls under the blanket category of kawaii fashion, but while being more open to interpretation than some other styles on this list, there's more to the Fairy K outfit than just being cute. Fairy K fashion uses pastel colors almost exclusively with Fairy K clothing usually involving cutesy motifs like angels, unicorns, and rainbows, as well as imagery from iconic 80s and 90s toy lines such as Sanrio, Barbie, and Care Bears. Number 3. Yami Kawaii Fairy K isn't the only fashion to make use of kawaii imagery. The relatively newly formed Yami Kawaii subculture uses similarly cutesy designs and soft colors, but serves them up with an edgy twist. Yami Kawaii, or Sick Cute, combines the typical cutesy aesthetic with dark or morbid themes, with many Yami Kawaii outfits incorporating imagery of skulls, bandages, or gas masks. Generally, it's when someone doesn't wear makeup that people say they look sick, but not for the Yami Kawaii fans. Yami Kawaii makeup often includes under eye blush and exaggerated eye bags, which gives the wearer a fittingly sickly look. Number 2. Lolita. Rocking the sort of look you'd only expect to see on old Victorian dolls, fans of the Lolita subculture prove you don't have to be a little girl to dress up like a princess. The Lolita subculture first emerged in the 1970s, and it is still beloved on both local and international scale today. A common misconception about Lolita fashion is that it's related to the controversial book of the same name, but there is no correlation between the two, and there is nothing controversial or unwholesome about the Lolita style. The Lolita subculture seeks to cultivate a feminine, Victorian-esque look, with main pieces of the typical Lolita ensemble including blouses, petticoats, bloomers, legwear, and headwear. Wigs are often worn as well. Although the Lolita subculture has fairly strict guidelines, there is still a lot of variation within the style. Lolita has three main subdivisions, which are sweet, goth, and classic as well as countless other versions, including, but not limited to, punk, sailor, pirate, and military variants. Number 1. Decora 
When people think of crazy and cool Japanese fashion, the examples that pop into their head are usually examples of the decora style. And it's no wonder why. With its bright popping colors and heaps of accessories, Decora is perhaps the most iconic and unforgettable J fashion subculture out there. The Decora style is fun and playful and usually uses either neon or pastel colors. Common pieces of Decora outfits include t shirts, hoodies, tutu skirts, arm warmers, and knee high socks. The most important part of a Decora outfit, however, is accessories. Which include everything from band aids and masks to bracelets and bows. The decor style typically uses a lot of accessories, giving it a very busy look that has proved appealing to J Fashion fans worldwide. If you liked our video, be sure to click like and subscribe for more How Expert Top 10 videos for all topics from A to Z in the future. Also, let us know what other topics you want us to do a How Expert Top 10 video in the future in the comments below. Thank you. Have an amazing day and take care. How Expert publishes quick how to guides on all topics from A to Z by everyday experts. Visit howexpert.com to learn more.